everybody. Today I have something a little bit different. Uh, this is actually something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I think I've told you guys about it before, but um, I'm going to show you how I draw started drawing from start to finish on the iPad. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that allows you to do everything in one place. I'll talk more about them at the end of the video. So yeah, I'm going to show you how I go from start to finish a drawing on Procreate. It's not going to be anything too detailed or anything. Uh, what I'm going to do is take a sketch from my sketchbook that's already, you know, doodled out and uh, just take a picture of that, import it, and show you how I do the shading and everything on the iPad. So um, I have the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, I believe. Um, this is the second generation. I had the first generation for years and I upgraded, but they're mostly the same. The only difference to me is that the, um, the pencil is always charging because it's magnetic here where on the other one you have to plug it in here, which kind of gets annoying, but it's not anything that will disturb your workflow very much. So just keep it charged. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna look through here and find something. Oops. Um, I had an idea before, hold on. Okay, I'm thinking I'm gonna do this one. Uh, it's really simple and it's got enough of the body that I can show you the shading and everything. And it's just a portrait, so something easy. So I'm going to bring up the camera. You could take a picture with your phone too. You don't actually have to use the iPad. But what I do is take one from a little bit further away and just zoom in a little. If you take one up close, it gets warped, um, which is fine if you don't have a lot of room because uh, you can just change it digitally afterwards. So this is probably good enough. Okay, so in Procreate, I'm going to create I'm not going to work directly from the photo because we don't know the exact size of that photo photo or anything. So I have here um, one that's eight and a half by 11. I just called it paper and it is um, eight and a half by 11 inches, 300 DPI, which is like the most basic uh, least amount of DPI that you want. And then I'm just going to import the photo into this file because that way it's the right size that I want and everything. All right, so uh, you kind of just set it, place it where you want. I'm gonna put it pretty large on the page, maybe higher up, right there. Okay, so now we have the drawing on my page. Uh, I'm going to change the opacity, make it pretty light. If you want, you can change the, um, the contrast of the drawing first so it's easier to see, but this worked out fine. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and work through what I usually do. Uh, I am left-handed, and I do kind of turn everything this way when I'm drawing. So uh, I apologize in advance, um, but I'm also recording this. You guys already see it on the left side. I'm gonna have the screen recording, so here you guys can see what I'm doing with my hands, and then you can see the detailed version on the other side. All right, first thing I'm going to do, I don't usually do this, but because I'm left-handed, it's more natural for me to draw characters facing to the right. Um, and then the opposite with left right-handed people, it's this is probably more natural for a right-handed person just because of the curves. Um, so I'm going to flip this horizontally. That's also a good trick to do to check your proportions and stuff. It'll look weird if your drawing isn't um, 
you know, right, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, so brushes. Everybody always asks about brushes. My favorite one to sketch with is the 6B pencil. You can find it. Okay, so the 6B pencil is right here in the sketching section. What I did was modify it a little bit because the this version is a little bit sharper. So um, here, I'll go into my settings. I'm not sure what I changed, but you can compare the options here in your video to you in the video to your version if you want. Um, I think I just gave it more texture and more of a square shape and made it more like a pencil than a pen. All right, so those are the settings for that one. The other brush I'm gonna use is the dry ink brush. Um, and then I have this 6B pencil also, that's just, um, it's opened up wider so you can do uh, thicker versions and this is what I shade with. So the dry ink brush looks like this. And I did change it a little bit also. So here are the settings for that. I don't remember what I changed either. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, I've pretty much been using these brushes for years and I don't really stick, try new things. Um, I do have a few of these like stippling and uh, half tone brushes that are really fun, um, but my basic sketching ones I put here and I just use those all the time. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to start with a 6B pencil. I like to sketch in like a dark red um, because it stands out and it's, I don't know, it just looks nice. I'm used to doing it. Uh, traditionally too so all right so I always start with the eyes I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I do I'm not gonna explain um, all of the in detail what I do um, like the basics of procreate uh, you can kind of see what I'm doing here and if you want a more basic tutorial there are a lot out there um, I'm just showing you like the tips and tricks that I do, I guess. So not really a basics, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this drawing is like really doodly and cartoony, so I'm probably going to Sharpen it up a bit. Oh, so this is really just the sketch layer. Um, so I'm just gonna go really quick and draw what I want. Um, and then I'm gonna go back and ink it afterwards. This is not really that necessary. You don't need to do this. Um, sometimes when I'm, oops, uh, when I'm using reference, I'll actually trace the reference and then I'll go in and um, get rid of the photo and then go work from the tracing and redraw the tracing. Um, Cause you kind of have to learn how to draw the thing before you um, before you draw it on your own. Let me give her heavier lids. Um, so some of the tricks that I stopped using, um, on the new iPads with this pencil that has the angled flat part on it. There's actually a button here. Um, you can set it to, if you tap it twice, uh, I think it'll switch from pencil to eraser. Uh, I turned that off just cause I, it's kind of hard to like 
do that. I don't know. I'm just used to what I do. So I didn't really welcome any changes. <laughs> but that is a shortcut if you, uh, if you think that would help you with your process. Alright, we'll move on to her hair. This is actually a sketch for a mermaid project that I was working on. Can't really go into detail about it. But I don't think I ended up using this drawing, so. I gotta remember that I'm going to ink this after, so try not to go into too much detail. So when it comes to drawing hair, I try to do um, just a basic shape of the flow. So like I want it to go like this and then I want her hair to go down and then out because I want it to look flowy without being too uniform. So I try not to have any patterns in the hair um, like some people if you if you don't do this actively a lot of the times I feel like it's human nature to do symmetrical things so like you'll see someone's hair in a drawing and it'll go like this and then on the other side it'll do the same thing or this wave and this wave are the same and they repeat so I try not to do those things I'll try to like alternate sizes or like maybe not like that like a big one and then a small one and then on the other side make sure that they don't um, match up you know so those are just some tips for hair uh, to make it look a little bit more natural but that's also a way like if you have a character that um, you want it to actually look like they did their hair with a curling iron, then you would kind of want the symmetrical or like the, the same size uh, waves and stuff like that. So A little ear out here um, so once I do the sketch I'm gonna put a crown on her <laughs> once I do the sketch is when I do any anatomy moving around so the cool thing about procreate is that you can select things and move them around and you can use the liquify tool which is under adjustments right here so I usually just use the push option and you can make your brush a different size and let's say uh, I don't like that this bump in her hair is kind of matching with this one uh, so I'm gonna move one of them up a little bit and move this one down so there you can really easily adjust things um, without it getting too blurry uh, sometimes it will get blurry, so you kind of have to like limit yourself, especially when there's already details. And try not to do this on your inking layer. Um, do it before then, because if you try to liquefy your inking and it's supposed to be really clean and crisp, it's going to start blurring. So like get all of this out of the way before you start inking, if possible. So I'm going to adjust her head a little bit. I think this eye needs to come out further. And 
So that looks good to me here. This is when, actually no, I'm gonna move her eye out a little further. Oops. So in, in order to select something and move it, you'd press the selection tool and do freehand. So I'm gonna outline her eye and then you press the arrow and you can move it over. You can make it bigger, you can do a lot of things. So that's pretty easy. All right, so it looks good to me here, but now I'm going to flip this image horizontally again. So canvas, flip horizontally. And now it looks different, it looks kind of weird. So the whole thing looks a little bit unbalanced to me now. Um, so I'm going to go back into the liquify. Try to change this shape a little. So because I moved this down, um, this area looked a little weird to me. So I'm going to move this back out. All right. I think that looks okay to me now. Um, I'm going to flip it back while I work on it. And they both look pretty good. All right. So it's getting a little off center. I'm going to move all of it over. So now I'm going to start the inking process. So I've already taken this layer. I've made it invisible. This layer, I'm going to bring this opacity down again, pretty low. This is like 16%. I'm going to add another layer on top. And you can do colored lines. I'm just going to do black for this. And I'm going to use the dry inking brush. So the settings I have on my brush are pretty sensitive. So I keep mine around this area, which is like 10%, maybe a little bit bigger. At least for the details, you can get thicker when it comes to the hair and stuff. But um, if you want a focal point in your image, you want the most detail to be like on her face or wherever your focal point is. All right. <laughs> I think it's lagging a little because it still says liquify here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not using liquify, just so you know. All right. So I'm on a new layer. Got to make sure. And I always start with the eye because it's the most fun. All right, so that's a little sensitive to me. So I really like this brush because it gives it like a, it's the closest thing I could come up with that gives you like a, um, a brush pen kind of feel, like the Pentel brush pen that I always use because it's really black ink. It tapers easily, but it also gives you a little bit of roughness on the edges. So the very slight dry brush look. So I just use my sketch as a really loose guideline to the inking. When it comes to the eyebrows, I always try to draw them in the way that the hair grows. So I go, I go up and then out or down, um, and then just try to taper them off at the front. Um, a lot of how I draw is, um, especially for portraits, I've learned so much from watching makeup videos on YouTube. <laughs> 
Like, I love putting the makeup on my characters. It's so fun. I don't know. And I like, I like the, for the characters to actually look like real people who have makeup on and it's not like natural. Like crazy highlights and, you know. Like I get, I get some comments sometimes where people are like, that skin tone wouldn't have blush, but they would put, if they wanted to, they could put blush on and then they would look like that. Or like, you know, I don't blush, but I really like the look of it and I like to put it on. So I don't know. It's all based on whatever aesthetic you're going for, I guess. Okay, so I gave her a little bit wider of a cheek and a smaller chin, and I don't like it, so I'm going to go back. So my, my eraser brush, I match to whatever uh, brush I'm using at the moment, so usually it's a pencil, but I'm switching to the dry ink because you want the same kind of edge. All right. So now that I'm going to start with the hair, I'm actually going to make the, the brush a little bit bigger because it gets really tedious if you use such a small brush for all of the hair details. And I'm just going to loosely follow my outline for the hair and try to go with whatever flow the hair strands are going um, and try to keep my brush lines as smooth as possible. You kind of got to draw with your whole arm when you do this, if you want a smooth line. I try to make the hair look like it's twisting. And if you mess up, you can just try to like cover it up. You don't even need to erase it sometimes. Just, just make it look like it was on purpose. <laughs> Oops, that one's not gonna work. I think, um, Drawing hair really ha comes with practice. So right now this strand is looking too uniform to me. Um, I don't mind the size of the curls or the waves, but the thickness is bothering me. So I'm going to thicken it. I guess I, I drew that here. And have a little loose strands come out. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, put her neck here. And here you really want to um, do the different line weights for the hair. If it's in the shadow, then you have thicker lines. If it's small details, um, thinner, obviously. <laughs> All right.
So you want, um, when you think of your hair that you're drawing, kind of, I like to chunk it out in pieces, almost as if it's a ribbon. So there's like an edge, two edges, and that you see the underside and the over, over the top and stuff. So like right here, it's like a flat piece that lifts and you see underneath it here. You just want to make sure it has as much form as possible. So this, this is bothering me right here. There's three equal parts that I just did on my own. So, um, like without thinking. So I want to break it up somehow. They're also equally, the height is the same. So I'm going to make a taller one here. Oops, a little messy. And then put a little bit more strands that break it up. That feels a lot better already. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done with the inking. Tried to keep it really simple, so I'm not taking too long. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and color it. And I'll do a pretty flat um, shading style. I'll just show you how I do the two different styles that I usually do. 
All right, so that's what it looks like. Um, here it is without the backgrounds. It's kind of cool. And then um, if you ended up like, I like really bold lines. So sometimes when I'm drawing, I'll have a really light hand and I'll realize that like it's not bold enough. You can just duplicate your layer. Sorry. Uh, you can just duplicate your layer and that'll double it. So like, it's okay for me right now, but if I duplicate it, um, that makes it a little bit, a little bit thicker. It's kind of hard to tell, um, but if you're using a brush that's uh, more like the 6B pencil where it has more holes in it, um, that'll make a big difference. But yeah, it's fine right now. All right, so I'm gonna start coloring. I usually do flat layers first, which is called like the fill. Um, you can do it all in one layer. It's easier to separate them because that way you can go back and, you know, change it easily. Uh, so I'm just gonna use, here's this basic skin tone that I've saved and I'm just gonna pick something. Let's go there. Um, but with, skin tones you kind of want to keep in this area um there's more yellow colors and more pinkish colors um yeah so there's a good range and you don't want it too saturated so i would stay away from like this this side of the circle um go somewhere down in the middle and you can change it later um Make it a little more pink. Oops. So the way I like to color is just doing it by hand. Um, I don't know why. I just, it might take longer than normal, but I think it's It's just like, sometimes it's better to do it like this. So I just, um, since the color is gonna be on a separate layer, I'm just kind of roughly outlining the area that this color is gonna be in. Just make sure you don't leave any white spots. And then you can fill it if you have so uh, since I'm using the dry ink brush, it has bumpy edges like that so that when I fill, there's some white holes there. If you don't want that, um, when you go to fill, you drop it here and hold it for a while and then there's a drop color threshold. You bring it up a little bit. So if that got rid of a lot of it, um, you can probably do some more if you want. Otherwise you can just, you know, fill it in on your own afterwards. So that's the skin layer. Go ahead and make a new layer and we'll do the hair. Let's do something cool and bright. Maybe green hair, purple hair. Let's do purple hair. All right, so the purple layer, the purple hair layer is gonna be on top of the skin tone. And with the hair, you kind of gotta be a little bit more careful with your edges since you're drawing on top of the skin. And make sure you close all of your shapes so that when you fill, it's not going to fill out the whole background. And if you have any holes that you wanna leave in the hair, so like right here, I want this spot to be open and not hair color. So I'm just gonna outline it real quick.
All right, so that's one chunk. Let's just go ahead and fill it, see how it looks. Perfect. A little bit of spot I missed there. I'll do the other side. All right, looks good. I'm probably just gonna leave her shirt white. Um, so what I wanna do, I could either color it white or I could just, no, I'll probably color it white. I'll do one more layer in between the two for this shirt. We'll give it a slightly off-white color just so you can see it easier. I'm just trying to end it with a nice shape so I don't have to keep drawing further down. <laughs> All right, so we got three layers of color. Um, this I'll do later. And then the skin. So I love working on the skin the most. So we'll keep the base layer there and put another layer on top to work with. And... Um, Let's see. So we're going to add the whites to her eyes. And I'll just do it on its own layer, pretty much. Sorry, there's like kids outside and my window's open. <laughs> Let's put, let's give her like purple gray eyes. Maybe lighter. All right. All right, so I'm gonna just put makeup on her really quick. So I'm going to make one more layer above her skin. And because of the blush, the way I put blush on, it's going to be like a airbrush kind of. So what I'm going to do is select the skin tone because it's already in the shape that I want it. So now all of this is selected. I'm going to go back into that layer, select a blush color. I'm going to have a more pink blush today because she has purple hair. And I'm probably going to go with something really vibrant and then just dull it down later. So I have this pretty bright pink here. And then I'm going to use my 6B pencil. Make it pretty large. And in case you didn't know this, with the Apple Pencil and iPad, if you tilt your brush, so let's see, this is a normal stroke if you can see it. But if you tilt the brush, it kind of does like a faded effect, almost as if you had a pencil and you're drawing it on the side. So that's what I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna tilt it and just kind of fade it in there. Come up on the eyes so she has some eyeshadow. Oops. <laughs> it might be a little hard to see right now, but I'm going to make it darker in a second. I'm going to put some on her nose. And just kind of gently fade it out a little bit. I 
add some to her shoulders. All right, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna play with the type of layer here. So um, I'm gonna make it a multiply layer. And that made it a little bit darker. It, it makes it transparent, so it affects the um, skin tone underneath it. So it's kind of like a bright, and then I kind of dull it down a little bit from there and it looks a bit more natural. And now I can kind of work with it and see if I want to bring it out further. But yeah, that's, I like that, how that looks. All right, so now I'm just gonna do the shading. This is the most fun. Um, so I'm going to put one layer underneath the inks but on top of all of the colors so right in between those and we're going to turn it into a multiply layer and probably oh, bring the opacity down to like let's say 50 percent just for now we can adjust it later but this is so we can see it so you're going to pick a shadow color um if you if you want just a basic shadow just pick gray like a very medium gray, but I would advise picking a colored shadow. Uh, it doesn't have to be super vibrant, but it gives your character more, I guess like atmosphere. Um, if you study color and stuff like that, if somebody's outside, a lot of the times their shadow is gonna be blue because of the sky and the colors. Um, so I like to pick like a bluish purple for my shadow. So let's like something like a medium grayish purple there. And for shading, I like to pick the pencil. Um, okay. So again, I start with the face. Um, I put a shadow over the eyes. And then I use this hair to cast a shadow on the face. Oh, before you do any of this, sorry, you want to pick a light source. Um, I always like to pick my light source coming from like here. So a little bit higher than eye level and then like to the left. It's just a, like a habit I do. Um, if you're drawing a character in an environment, you have to actually think about, you know, the light source is there. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do a really basic one here. So since this hair is really a really big piece, I'm going to turn the opacity up a little so you guys can see it better. Let's go to like 70 something. All right. So this piece is hanging over here and all of this is by her neck. So it's mostly going to be in shadow. Um, basic shading techniques, uh, if something has an, a hard edge and it's casting a shadow down, then it will be a hard edge. If some, if a form is turning away from you, then it'll have a, a soft edge. So like here on her forehead, we have a cast shadow that's going to have a sharp edge, but her forehead here is turning away from the light source. So I'm going to shade it on the side a little bit and kind of do a soft gradient shadow. Uh, and if it's a little too bumpy here, so like you can use this smudge tool and just blend that out a little bit. Oops. Sorry, I messed up. Okay, the sh this should be set to that type too. So there, she has a, now you can see just with some simple one color shading that this piece of hair is over her forehead and her forehead curves away. So it gives you like a little bit of um, three dimensionality to your drawing. Um, I just think it's fun to play with. A lot of people 
don't like to use that kind of shading on uh, really flat drawings like this, but you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Just try not to overdo your shadows. I think just subtle, it's good to stick with subtle shadows first and then, yeah. All right, so her jaw is going to be casting a shadow onto her neck. So it's going to be a hard edge like that. But then there's a shadow on the side of her neck because it curves away. So you're going to do a soft shadow there. Same with this side. And her, her face is also going to cast a shadow on her hair. So you just kind of just do a rough shape of shadow and then change the contour of it based on how the hair is flowing. So like this chunk of hair is in front of this chunk. So the shadow is going to move further down. And then there's this hair. So yeah, you're probably going to just keep playing with those same few uh, principles and then just do it on your whole drawing. This hair is over her shoulder, casting a shadow. Her shoulder turns away from us, so we're going to put a soft shadow here. Kind of blend it into that part. This armpit here is casting a shadow, so it's going to be a hard edge. So the alternating of that is really what's going to um, make your drawings come alive. This hair is casting a shadow here. This shirt is here. So my shadow is a very close color to this, the hair color. So I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit later. All right, so with the hair, I'm going to make my brush bigger. So it's it's all the way up on this, this brush, the size. So I'm going to switch to this one that I made larger and probably bring it around there. So for the hair, um, you're not gonna have, it's gonna be a lot more of the soft shadow. So like here, if the light source is coming from here, we're gonna have shine here and this part goes down. So I'm just gonna gently shade that area. And it'll all come together a, a lot better once I put some, uh, some highlights in here. Um, so this part is in shadow. The shading's really gonna um, help with the form of your hair also. This is casting a shadow. This is turning away, we're seeing underneath, so kind of fades down. I love this brush because you can just easily uh, let it fade. Procreate did a really good job with her brushes. So I actually really like the flat look of shading usually. So. This is, this hair is getting a little too much for me, but I'm just doing it to show you guys. Um, yeah, I like really simple shadows.
All right, so that's it for the shading. Um, I need to add a little bit more on this arm. It's very simple. Let's put some over her chin. Um, I'm going to give her a cheekbone shadow because I love doing that with makeup contouring. But if it's too harsh, you can just blend it out with the smudge tool. All right, so another fun part we're gonna do right now is the highlights. So highlights, I still wanna keep underneath the line art, so it's gonna be underneath that, but on top of everything else. And I usually do two levels of highlights. So uh, we're gonna have like a general glowing highlight and then like a spot highlight. So this is gonna be the glowing highlight. We're gonna change the layer type to add. And then I like to pick, based on whatever color your light is, I like to do like a really warm yellow for the sun. It's like orange and then just like, for this layer type, you wanna keep it really close to white so I'm going to bring it like right there and oops, we're going to use the same 6B pencil, not too big. And you don't want to go overboard with this. Um, the, you want the most amount of contrast wherever your focal point is, and then you want it to fade out. So I already added my shadows. So the highlights need to be focused around her face and then they get softer as they go away from her face. So we'll start with her hair right here. Oof. Make it smaller and I'm going to make this less opa opaque. We'll put 60 probably. This actually could go warmer. Let's see. So you just want a little hint of it wherever the sun, the sun or the light is going to shine. And you want to be very selective of this. I know it's fun, but you have to control yourself. <laughs> I always get carried away with doing highlights. All right, so I'm probably maybe a tiny bit on these parts, but you don't want much. That's probably about it. So with her face, I'm going to do, you want the most contrast right here. So that's the spot on her forehead. The nose. Her cheekbone is kind of hidden under the shadow. So you want to start it right at the edge of that shadow and then blend it away. We'll do some on her upper lip and blend it out. If you want some in her eye, all right, and then we'll put a little bit on the neck, just enough to show that the texture of the skin. Um, this would be different if she was like, let's say 
wet or sweating or something, um, the highlights would be stronger. All right, so because I want the spot highlight to really pop, I'm going to dim this down a little bit further. So the opacity, I'm gonna bring it probably down to there. And then I'm gonna make one more layer, make it in the added layer also. And this is gonna be almost white. So spot highlights usually are just like sharp and they don't fade very much. So I'm gonna use this dry ink brush. And here is where you do the detail highlights, strands of hair. I like to do to make them like a shape in the hair. Um, and you really want to be careful, don't overdo it. Can do a little bit here. You want to follow the shape of the hair. And then we're going to put a tiny bit on her face. So let's, oh, actually this layer can be on top of the white, the outline because some of the highlights are going to go on top of the black. And I would only do the nose. And if you want like lipstick look, you could do like some lines. Oops. Um, if you like the makeup look, you can do highlights like glossy eyes. Um, I would do under the eyebrow, but you got to fade it out. So like I get a little bit of the 6B pencil and just kind of blend it out a little bit further than that. And we'll put a tiny bit here too. I went over the shadow, so I'm going to erase that part. You want it sharp here. And we'll just give her a really flat gold um, crown. Oops. Oh, not on that layer. I'll put it on the eyeball layer because <laughs> we didn't add anything to that. It's just like a really graphic crown, whatever. All right. Um, I think that's about it. This is mostly what I do with most of my drawings. Uh, sometimes they're more flat, sometimes they're more shaded. Uh, this is kind of right in the middle. It looks really cool when you take the background out. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is it. If I was going to make prints, I would just export it as whatever file type you want. And it's ready. That's about it. Like, I don't really do much else. Um, this could be a sticker. You just want to make sure that uh, you take the background out like this and just clean up any um, overlapping color that you did. This might be a really cool sticker. <laughs> And um, from here you can change, like, if you want to change your, like, say the skin tone, you could do hue saturation for the layer. And then you can change it, um, you can <laughs> make her all kinds of colors, make it a little bit darker. Ooh, she looks so cool. Um, just make sure if you go darker to adjust the saturation because you don't want it to be like a neon orange kind of there. 
so pretty. Okay, I want to make her um, her hair lighter. So we'll do the brightness and more of a grayish color. So I'm going to bring the saturation down. Maybe a different color. Ooh. That's pretty. This is so fun to play with. If you change the lightness of the drawing though, you want to adjust your shadow. Um, so it looks fine right now, but if you wanted to adjust it, you just adjust the opacity. So I would leave it about 70%, 72 for mine. All right, I think that's about it. Um, if you guys have any other tricks or tips, leave them in the comments below. I'm sure this will be uh, a cool reference for people looking for ideas. Um, if you use Procreate, you should follow them on Instagram or Twitter. They're always posting uh, tutorials and little secrets and tips. Uh, there's so much to this app that I don't even know about, like all these hidden features that you can use just by like, swiping your hand around. So uh, follow them and watch all of their little videos. They're so helpful. All right, like I said earlier, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it is a platform that allows you to create your own website with your own domain and even a online shop all in one place. Back when I first started, everything used to have to be separate. Uh, you'd have all these links you'd have to throw out to your fans to try and find where you are. Um, but Squarespace has really changed the game with letting you create your own shop right there on your website. It's so useful and all of their templates look beautiful. All you have to do is just plug in your info, your photos, anything else you want to display, and it automatically looks beautiful with all of their amazing templates. They really cater towards their artists audience. So a lot of the templates have galleries and really awesome ways to display your photos. You can import your photos right from social media, which is so convenient. And then you can edit them right there on the website. Squarespace links with a ton of shipping programs so that when you get an order in your shop, all of the information is right there for you to pack it, ship it out, and send them their tracking info. It's so easy. They also have award-winning 24-hour customer service in case you get lost. Uh, they're right there to help you through it. So if you're in need of your own website for your portfolio, your resume, or even just an event you're planning, you should check out Squarespace. They have a free trial on their website. And if you like it, you can go to squarespace.com slash Jacqueline for 10% off your first purchase. There's more info in the description. So yeah, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope I answered a lot of your questions. Um, let me know if you have any other questions down below. I'll try to answer them. I hope you guys have fun drawing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.